Hi there everyone and welcome back to Dungeon Fog once again. In this tutorial video we are going to be looking at the export tool and what that can do for you. First things first is we are going to look up on our taskbar up at the top where we can see editor, GM notes, and the play feature which we will be exploring in future tutorial videos and then we draw our attention to the export tab. When you click on that link it will then bring you over to this interface over here. The main purpose of exporting your maps is for you to have something physical to manipulate. Say you wanted to take your map and laminate it so that you could then begin to write and draw all over it. Well this export tool allows you to take the maps that you create in the Dungeon Fog editor put them onto your computer so that you can then either print them or send them over to other tabletop platforms as you need it. So first things first, we're going to start at the top here and we are looking at the name of the file that I'm going to be exporting it to. So right underneath the export heading, we see the file name. So this means that when I export my map, it will appear as this name. You can change the file type when I click down on this drop down menu. You can change it into various types such as the PNG, JPEG, WebP, PDF or multi-page PDF depending on how you want to manipulate your map after you've exported it. Underneath the file name section we can then come down to the levels tab. Now this will give you a breakdown of not only how many levels are on your current map that you can scroll down on this bar with, but it'll also give you the name of the level you're looking at, as well as the number of rooms on each level. It will, by default, bring you to the top level of your map. So in this case, for our tutorial map, it is the rooftops level. So whichever the highest level of your map is in the editor, it will bring you to that map when you come over to the export tab. You can then click on specific rooms, in which case you can then get a sense of how your map is going to look when you export it. So you'll notice here that my map, as I'm going to be currently exporting it, is blank. You will notice that all of my room labeling and numbers are gone. Well, that's because I currently have them concealed. However, if I choose to click on the Show GM Information button down here, well, all of my locked doors, windows, my room numbers reappear, as well as any trapped or concealed items. It is all a matter of how much information you want your players to have when they look at the map as such when you export it. If you remember from my tokens video, we had a elf female token sitting right by the entrance to the tavern. Well, she's currently not there right now. That is because I have my tokens hidden as well. If I click on that button, well then there she is. She pops right back up. Hiding or revealing tokens is going to be most important when you're dealing with NPCs that your characters can interact with on the map, and more specifically with monsters. Seeing as tokens allow you to create monsters in your maps, you're going to want to make sure that if you're having any surprise encounters with monsters, that you maybe keep that information hidden from your players. The choice is entirely yours. Again, I just want to emphasize that it deals with how much information you want your players to have and to see when the map is exported. If we look down here, we can see our show grid option, and currently I have my dotted grid visible. If I want, I can deselect that and just turn it into more of a canvas-like picture with no grid markings delineating the spaces on the map. Exporting wall shapes as an SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphic, allows you to export a level and it creates sort of a what looks like a wireframe of all of the rooms and borders on your map. It removes any type of lighting and all assets from your map when you export it, allowing you to manipulate the shape and the scale of the map in other virtual tabletop platforms. Now, the Dungeon Fog team is looking to improve their SVG export tool to help generate better lighting borders and other virtual tabletop platforms. So this is something that 
they are looking into improving and making a little bit more functional if you're going to be exporting these maps and using them in other platforms other than just the play mode for Dungeon Fog itself. Finally, we're going to jump over to the export size. This is probably the most complex part of the export tool. And all we're really doing is just changing the clarity and sharpness of the images as it's being exported and printed onto paper, as represented by the dots per inch number down here. Currently, my map is set to a scale of 100% and a grid size of one inch. All this means is that when I print my map out, it is going to have 70 dots or 70 little pieces of information per inch of paper that it uses. However, we can change the clarity and sharpness of these images by changing the dots per inch number. And we can do that by either changing the scale of the image that we're exporting or the grid size. So if we were to change the scale from 100 to let's say 200%, well, you can see that the exported images will now have 140 dots per inch, meaning I get a much sharper image per inch of paper when I print my map out. If we click on this drop down menu here, we can change the grid size to inches, millimeters, or centimeters, whichever unit of measurement we are most comfortable with. And say I changed my grid size to be two inches. Well, now my exported images are going to have 35 dots per inch, meaning that the sharpness or clarity of each inch of paper as my map is being printed out will be a little bit blurrier. So the most important thing to remember when you're changing the scale and grid size of your maps when you're exporting them is that the higher the dots per inch, the sharper the image you're going to have because more information is being displayed per inch of paper being printed out. Any changes that you make in either the scale or grid size, you are going to want to make sure you apply those changes. And you can see this export button will now appear down on the bottom, allowing us to export our map proper. This tiling feature, if we select that, brings up another little mini interface. The tiling feature is a great way to take a large scale map with a lot of assets and a lot of information that may be too big for your computer system or your web browser to handle and puts it into more manageable chunks. So currently I have the interface saying that when I export my map, I want it to export two horizontal tiles and two vertical tiles. And to show you exactly what that looks like, I'm going to apply that and you can see that we get a sort of live preview over here. Each tile is now going to be exported as such and I can click on any tile I want to see exactly how that image is going to appear when the map gets exported from Dungeon Fog itself. And then it's just a matter of marrying the tiles up together to recreate the full scale map. Any changes that we make to the export size either by changing the scale grid size or tiling must be applied and then once those changes are applied the export button will appear on the bottom here allowing us to take the map from Dungeon Vog back out onto our computer in whichever file folder your downloads default to. So there you have it folks a very quick rundown of the export tool and everything that you can do with it. As always, if you have any specific questions for me, please let me know in the comment section below. You can follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, YouTube channel. Speaking of my YouTube channel, I now have officially over 100 subscribers. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for subscribing to the channel, following me, liking my videos, sharing them, and doing whatever else you do with these videos. I try to make them as most informative as I can, and I'm always trying to improve my techniques as I go. So any type of feedback that you guys can have for me to improve the quality of these videos as well, please let me know in the comments below, or you can always reach out to me on the Discord server as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in our next video.